You ever feel like every scene is your favorite scene in the Golden Girls? I feel that way. And from all of your submissions, you all definitely feel that way too. Here's part two of the Golden Girls Favorite Scenes trilogy. I just figured out what's going on here. Blanche. <laughs> You were sore at me for inviting your friend without asking you, so you hired this guy to come over and teach me a lesson. <laughs> God, I wish I was dead. Blanche, let's go get the hors d'oeuvre. Oh. Excuse us. Oh. Oh. oh, I have never been so embarrassed in my entire life. I made a fool of myself, didn't I? Yes! Well, I feel awful, just awful. Listen, if you don't want tonight to turn into a total disaster, you have to stop being so self-conscious. Oh, well, you're right, of course. Dr. Newman is a guest in our home. If I'm self-conscious, he'll be ill at ease. I can't allow that to happen. It would be unsouthern. <laughs> That's a good bell. Dorothy, get the door. I know is that Dorothy should find out what kind of a man Elliot really is. Now, if you're her friend, you'll tell her. But honey, she'd be devastated. What kind of a friend would I be to hurt her like that? Well, what kind of a friend would you be if, if you let Elliot ruin her life? She could marry that man. They could have a child. <laughs> they could adopt a child. <laughs> and then one night at the country club, Possibly during little Mei Ling's coming out party. <laughs> Dorothy's having the time of her life when she goes to the powder room and she overhears the towel lady telling Mrs. Steinbeck that Dorothy's husband, Dr. Elliot Clayton, has bonged every female member of the country club. <laughs> Can you let that happen to Dorothy? Can you let that happen to little Mei Ling? Hasn't she suffered enough? Not as much as I have listening to that story. Oh. Let's say that uh, you make Miles a batch of your delicious creamy cupcakes, and he loves them so much that he wants you to make them all the time. <laughs> Miles does have a sweet tooth. But let's say that even though he loves your cupcakes more than life itself, one day he decides to try somebody else's cupcakes. <laughs> For lack of a better example, let's say my cupcakes. And I, in a mad, passionate moment, uh, forget myself and let him try my cupcakes. <laughs> How would that make you feel? I'd like to think I'd understand. Oh, good, good. I was hoping that's what you would say. <laughs> What? I'm sorry. It's just the idea of Miles wanting to try your cupcakes. <laughs> Why is that funny? No offense, Dorothy, but your cupcakes are dry and tasteless. <laughs> Nobody ever likes your cupcakes. My cupcakes are moist and delicious. <laughs> Men love my cupcakes. <laughs> A clue, Dorothy. Men would rather pay for cupcakes. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you Swedish meatball. I... Wait, wait a minute. You're actually talking about cupcakes, aren't you? You bet I'm talking about cupcakes. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. Have you and Miles been baking together? <laughs> Rose, I would never do that to you, I swear. Good. Because if I ever caught Miles with another woman in my kitchen, I'd... Butter. I wanted to be Butter Queen. Oh, yeah. What an actress. She was so good and gone with the wind. I wanted to be Miss Olivia de Havilland myself. Blanche, are you listening to this? Bits and pieces. Go on. Well, Butter Queen was our town's highest honor. From the time I was born, my folks groomed me for it. Singing lessons, dancing lessons, junior butter pageants. 
For 16 years, my entire life revolved around butter. You were very fortunate. So many of us wasted our youth. When the time came for the pageant, I was incredible. I showed poise in the evening gown competition. I was brilliant in the oral butter quiz. They couldn't even trip me up with a trick margarine question. <laughs> that evening, butter was spelled R-O-S-E. Yeah. Rose, you're embarrassing yourself. Please don't go on. I have to, Dorothy. I've kept these bitter butter memories too long. As the pageant drew to its frenzied finale, there I was, alongside the other two finalists, churning my guts out. When all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, my churn jammed. Wow. Yes. And just like that, it was over. I'd lost. It was the biggest disappointment in my life. It was small consolation to find out years later there had been churn tampering involved. Rebecca will be taken care of by her own doctor after selecting a donor from thousands of acceptable possibilities. Any questions? Plenty. Can just anybody walk in off the street and make my daughter pregnant? We screen the applicants very carefully. We know everything about them. We know their body type, their IQ, their eye color. Any more questions? Yes, just one. What in hell are we doing here? I feel like I'm in the middle of some awful dream. Yet I know it can't be a dream because there are no boy dancers. <laughs> Mother! I just cannot believe you are actually going to give money to someone like this sperm pusher. <laughs> you are a Devereaux. A Devereaux has never had to pay for it. I certainly haven't. She's always depended on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> Make jokes. I'd just like to know how you all would feel if you thought you were going to have a test tube for a son-in-law. Yeah, I, 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 one thing. Do I look at uh, my mother or at the camera? Look at the camera, and, and here's a little tip. Look at it like you're making love to it. <laughs> it might help if you give her a reference she's more familiar with. Okay, this is a rehearsal. We're gonna run through it once, and then we'll do it for real. And go. Guess what, Ma? I found you some real good pizza like you used to get in Sicily. <laughs> Boy, do you stink. Dorothy, Dorothy, relax. Just, just try and be yourself. I'm sorry. I know you can do I'm this. Sorry, sorry, I'll get it this time. All right, here we go. Everyone settle. And go. Guess what, Ma? I found some real Cecil. Some... No, that's not it. Wait a minute. What, what is the line? Guess what, Ma? I found some real good pizza, just like you used to get back in Sicily. Uh, sorry, now I know what the trouble is. There is something wrong with the line. Mm -hmm. That's why I can't say it. There's something wrong with the yes, line? Yes, you see, I'm an English teacher. I should know. The reason I can't say it is because the line itself is not grammatical. Mm -hmm. See? It should be really good pizza, not real good. Perfect pizza with pizzazz, even better. <laughs> hey, I can act and write. <laughs> Gee, I love this business. <laughs> Listen, you don't mind if I make the change, do you, Sai? No, no, not at all. In fact, I, I think I want to make a change, too. <laughs> Okay, Dorothy, let's see a smile. This one's for the camera. And action. Look, Grandma, I found you a real good pizza, just like you used to get in Sicily. Mmm. <laughs> That's a mighty... That's a mighty lousy pizza. <laughs> Ma, you never tasted it before? No, and I never will again. What the hell are you doing? Sorry, Cy. You can't pay me enough to endorse that slime on a shingle. <laughs> this nightgown is so sheer, I believe you can see right through it. <laughs> Hello, Fidel. 
Hello, Flash. How are you? You don't have cataracts, you tell me. <laughs> Beat it, you 50-year-old mattress. <laughs> oh, why, you, you miserable old... Blanche, 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 you know the rules. When one of you is out with Fidel, the other one does not interfere. My apologies. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go take a long, hot, steamy bath with just enough water to barely cover my perky bosoms. <laughs> You're only gonna sit in an inch of water? more civilized manner. You're right. I apologize, Fidel. So do I. Well, good night. Good night. I'll see you at noon for lunch. And six for dinner. Ten for dancing. Midnight for dessert. <laughs> dessert at midnight? <laughs> There's always room for jello. <laughs> I just hate you. <laughs> I regret the day you ever moved in here. And I regret the day I gave birth to you. Ted, I told Dorothy about Acapulco. You heard me make the reservations? Yes, and I think it's a terrible mistake. You mean, it's true? Well, yes. I don't know what to say. I hope you'll say yes. Ted, I think there's something you should know about Dorothy. She snores like a freight train. Who cares? She's still a great gal. Hey, guy, you're, you're a wealthy doctor. You could have gorgeous women crawling at your feet. Why waste your time with Dorothy? Stan, I think you're a little out of line. I'm not knocking Dorothy. Oh, what would you call this? A testimonial? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna have to be blunt. Ted, all your life, you've looked up to me and you've envied me for everything I have. That's why you want to marry Dorothy. Marry Dorothy? What are you talking about? Come on, Acapulco, the El Presidente. You're planning something big. Well, yeah. I met this great-looking stewardess on the flight out here, and I asked her to go to Acapulco, and she could only go if I found a sitter for her two kids. Hey, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Come again. They're, they're... They are great kids. Uh, one of them plays with matches and stuff, but you don't smoke, do you? <laughs> Teddy, you old stud! <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I mean, you hang around the master long enough, you're gonna pick up a few tricks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Listen, uh, Ted, I, I hate to <laughs> interrupt. <laughs> what was all that sweet talk about you having a crush on me? Well, I, mean, I did, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, but... What about last night? Well, I, I'll always remember last night as a very special evening. It was. It was a very special evening. And that's why I'm going to keep that deep, dark secret about yourself that you told me strictly between the two of us. Ah, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Don't <laughs> Good night, Ted, and bye. Bye. Uh, Collins, party of two, please. Oh, uh, may I borrow this? <coughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> may I have your attention, please? The gentleman at table five in the blue suit is impotent. Bon appetit. Here's my uh, card. How may I be of service to you? Uh, well, Mr. Pfeiffer, uh, it's a we... puff Pfeiffer. The the P is not silent. <laughs> Well, uh, Mr. Pfeiffer, uh, we're interested in arranging a funeral. Isn't that lovely? The three of you planning ahead for Mother. Hey, uh, Pfeiffer, how would you like a punch in your puff face? The funeral is for a neighbor. Oh, well, my condolences. Oh, no, there's no need. We didn't like her. In fact, the whole neighborhood despised her. Oh, I see. Well, how did she pass on? <laughs>
She killed him. <laughs> Rough neighborhood. Uh, look, uh, Mr. Uh, Pfeiffer. About the perfume, about the uh, about the funeral arrangements. We'd like something simple, tasteful, yet incredibly clean. cheap. <laughs> Let's get down to brass handles. Ladies, I'd like to present to you the winner of the 1985 Crypt and Casket Design Award. Paris has been talking about this one all spring. It's the Omega 3000. How much? You know, that top is hand-embellished gold leaf detail work. The satin interior is imported from a small textile mill outside Gestad. How much? It's also lead-lined. We're not burying Superman. How much? $6,000. My first house didn't cost that much. Mr. Pfeiffer, we have already told you. We are bereaved on a budget. Now, if you can't, if you can't accommodate us, we'll find someone who can. You know, the, uh, the Avante Supreme is a big seller. That retails for just $3,000. What do you call this one? A pine box. How much? $200. Sold. I need some advice, too. You need advice from me? Yeah, frightening, isn't it? <laughs> it's about Dreyfus. Okay. What about Dreyfus? The other day I thought he was lost, so I got a second dog, and then the first one came back. Sophia, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come see for yourself. Wow, two Dreyfuses. No, one Dreyfus. That's the point. I want to return the second. But I don't know how to tell which is which. That's where you come in. What do I do? Well, there's only one thing I can think of. We used to do it back on the farm, and I may be a little rusty, but I guess it's worth a shot. Whatever it is, do it. I'm desperate. OK. Here goes. Dreyfus, come here, boy. <laughs> Aren't you going to get mad? No. You want to play another hand? Nah, if you don't get mad, you take the fun out of it. <laughs> you still upset about Blanche? Yes, Ma. Tell her a cockamamie banquet is for her and get it over with. I can't. I was sworn to secrecy. Hi, Blanche. Eat dirt and die, trash. <laughs> It was story Rose told last night in kitchen about uh, going to St. Gustav's, learning to come in out of the rain. My very favorite doll. <laughs> Dorothy, let it go. Uh, anyway, uh, that trip changed her life, and now I must have courage to change mine. I'm going back with what I learned here. It didn't change my life. I just went home. Shut up. She's leaving. <laughs> I left Czechoslovakia because I was afraid of change, afraid of the new freedom. But now I see in America, freedom is change, always changing for the better idea. I want to be part of the future of my country. So I'm going home. And you got that part from my story? No, Vanna White's book. <laughs> I told you. Anyway, now I must go pack my things. And again, Rose, thank you for story. You know, isn't life funny? Last night in bed, I told myself that nobody listens to your stories, Rose. Quit telling them. And I swore I would never tell another story as long as I live. And then you hear something like this, and you realize these stories make a difference. Oh. You look just wonderful, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, is today Mother's Day? Why, yes, ma'am. Don't you remember? I called you and told you I'd be here. Of course. <laughs> of course, Virginia. No, darling, Virginia couldn't come. I'm Blanche. Here, look. Brought you a little present. <gasps> Lace handkerchiefs. <laughs> My. Well, you know, you always used to say that there were two things a lady could never have enough of. Lace handkerchiefs and gentlemen callers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next Mother's Day, I'll bring you a gentleman caller. <laughs> you want to go in the dining room, have some tea? Not right now, darling. Mama, do you remember that Mother's Day that I almost ruined when I ran off to get married? <laughs> no. <laughs> sure you do, honey. Don't you know I was a senior in high school and I was madly in love with Deck Bovinglow? We've been dating for nearly a month, so 
It seemed perfectly logical when he dropped by cheerleading practice and asked me to marry him. <laughs> oh, I thought he was a wonderful catch at the time. He was 40, out of work, <laughs> twice divorced, had three kids. <laughs> but the real reason I wanted to marry him was because his oldest daughter was a rival of mine at cheerleading. And I figured if I married Deck, I'd be her mama. <laughs> I could kick her off the squad. <laughs> anyway, I remember the next day I was in the rec hall when Deck came in, looking more handsome than I've ever seen him. Oh, black motorcycle boots, skin tight Levi's, a match in his mouth, and a white T-shirt with the sleeves rolled up to reveal his brand new Woody the Woodpecker tattoo. <laughs> God, I was an idiot. <laughs> anyway, he sauntered over to me at the soda fountain and gave me this long, smoldering look and said, So? Oh, nearly fainted dead away on the spot. The next thing I knew, I was sitting next to him in that souped-up old Studebaker, racing out toward bio country, where Deck knew this justice of the peace who specialized in marrying stupid teenage girls from well-to-do families. Now, lucky for me, old man Montgomery had been in the Rexall that day and overheard us making our plans and tipped off you and Daddy. You know, to this day, I don't know how you all got there ahead of us. But when we pulled up to Bubba's Chapel of Bliss <laughs> and Tackle Shop, <laughs> there you were. Well, I was ready for the fight of my life, but... All you said was, why, darling, I just came out here to give you away with my blessing. Why, I think Marion Deck might be the best thing in the world for you, Blanche. <laughs> well, at 17, I wasn't about to do anything you wanted me to do. <laughs> and you knew that. I gave Deck back his ID bracelet. <laughs> that had deck on one side and allergic to the law on the other. <laughs> Hopped in the car with you and Daddy and we took off home. I asked you if you were mad at me. You said, why, no, darling. This is the best Mother's Day I've ever had. <laughs> Don't you remember that, Mama? Well, I thought that happened to Virginia. <laughs> Wasn't Virginia the slut? <laughs> no, ma'am, that was me. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Grab That Dough, the show where all you really need to know to win is how to make a fist. Let's meet our lucky contestants. First on the green team, we have Dorothy Zbornak, an English teacher originally from Brooklyn, New York. She now lives in Miami with her mother, who will gladly pay anyone who will take her out for a date. <laughs> our second contestant is an artist with an incredible body. She runs her own museum, speaks Chinese, and hopes to sail around the world before she turns 40. Wow, that must be a typo. Welcome, Blanche Devereaux. Our next two contestants are brothers from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Blanche, that entire introduction was nothing but lies. I know, and I just loved it. <laughs> Did you hear that applause? Is that all you care about, money and applause? And sex. <laughs> For which I generally get applause. Our next contestant is a family counselor. She originally hails from St. Olaf, Minnesota, where she was voted the girl most likely to get stuck in a tuba. Welcome, Rose Nyland. Last but not least is a grandmother of six, Sophia Petrolo. Sophia, it says here that you and Dorothy are mother and daughter. No, Guy. Rose is my daughter now. And you, Dorothy, are the biggest disappointment to hit the streets since the AMC Pacer. <laughs> uh, 
Say, it's time to play Grab That Dough. Hands on buzzers. Let's begin with our trivia lightning round. What famous Tennessee Williams play was recently made into a film by Paul Newman? Willard. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rose. Was it The Glass Menagerie? That's correct for 100 points. <laughs> What innovative industrialist invented the assembly line? Willard. Well, I'm sorry, I did it again. Sophia. Henry Ford. That's correct. <laughs> For another hundred points, who is the current Secretary of State? Willard. Charles Schultz. <laughs> created peanuts. I thought that was George Washington Carver. <laughs> Willard, don't ever touch your buzzer again. Rose. Is the correct answer George Schultz? That's correct. <laughs> Rose is on a roll, and the blue team is leading 300 to nothing. Oh, really? Oh, shut up, Nyland. You shut up. Why don't you both shut up and answer this next question? For 100 points, complete this famous saying, better late than... Blanche. Pregnant. That's incorrect, but certainly not untrue. Rose. Guy, is it better late than never? Right you are, Rose. That signals the end of the trivia lightning round. The blue team leads with 400 points, while the green team trails with a big, fat zero. We'll be right back to take a spin on the big money wheel right after this commercial message. We're clear. Thanks. Yes, Dorothy? Is that a chicken you're carrying in that cage? Gee, I think it is. See, Rose. Now, before you all say no. No! Oh, please, just hear me out. Now, you've, you've heard me speak about Sylvia Butel down at the Grief Center. This is her chicken. Sylvia Butel? Isn't she the woman who thought Milton Burrow was sending her secret messages through her dentures? Yes, but with extensive counseling and some new bridge work, she's totally back to normal. Rose, the woman keeps a chicken in her house. How normal can she be? I kept a chicken in my home. You see my point? I will not have that filthy beast in my house. It belongs in a barnyard. This is not a farm chicken. Count Bessie is a showbiz chicken. Where do you see this? A showbiz chicken. What she do? Play the piano? <laughs> she plays the piano. <laughs> you just wait till you see this. Okay, honey, come on, it's showtime. Yeah, come on, sweetheart. Oh, I know. I know. Here we go. Okay, cow, hit it. incredible what do you say girls can she stay i guess so all right oh, thank you but just be sure and keep her in her cage oh maybe i can convince the count to give us some live entertainment with dessert <laughs> have you any requests how about bye bye birdie i can last just as long as you can oh dorothy please i think i do have a little more endurance than you blanche we are not dancing on our backs you take that back i will not you just implied that i'm an old lady oh well honey i didn't mean to imply it i meant to say it flat out <laughs> You know what your problem is, Blanche? You can't stand a little competition. Oh. <laughs> which is why you tried to keep this whole thing a secret from me. Well, I noticed you're here too, Dorothy, so you tried to keep it a secret from me. Hi, girls. At two, Judas. <laughs> no, it's me, Rose. I'm just... <laughs> Oh, So you two found out about this thing too, huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. 
Well, let me give you a little friendly advice. You're wasting your time. Because that $1,000 prize is going to be mine. When I was younger, I was known as the dancing fool. Uh, how old were you when they dropped the dancing part? <laughs> Yowza, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 13th annual Jefferson Hospital Heart Charity Dance Marathon. Yes, sir. <laughs> One word of caution before we begin. Contrary to what some folks thought last year, uh, this marathon is not part of the cardiac rehabilitation program here at the hospital. <laughs> so if any of you toe tappers have more than 30% blockage, we implore you to leave the dance floor at this time. <laughs> All right now, let's let the dance marathon begin. A one, two, three, four. Blanche, you're not going to believe this. What? I just twisted my ankle. I'm not going to be able to dance. No, 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 you have to. I can't believe it. Forced me to dance all night in pain? Oh, I mean, if you win, you said you were going to take all the money. What do I get out of this evening? <laughs> Let's samba. <laughs> Gentlemen, our charity dance marathon is now entering its seventh hour. Let's give our contestants a great big hand. Hi, girls. How are you holding up? Oh, fine. Just doing fine. Terrific. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of the big dance back in St. Olaf to kick off pretzel week. My Uncle Gunther, after the great beer nut shortage of 20 Send a judge over here. This woman is trying to put us to sleep. <laughs> you're just exhausted and you're trying to blame it on me. Exhausted? I'll show you who's exhausted. Maestro, how about something with a little octane? Okay, little lady. All right, boys, take it away. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Go on. No, Dave, I better do this by myself. You might get hurt. Three, four. I taught a class today, the finest school in Dade County. Two girls had shaved heads, and three boys had green hair. <laughs> They're expressing themselves. Yeah, well, I expressed myself. I told them they had to leave. They were too ugly to look at. <laughs> now the parents are mad. A father came in in a three-piece suit and defended Tiffany, a bald girl with a nose ring. <laughs> What's that? Enchiladas rancheros. Why don't you just shoot me? Hi. Oh, Hi, Rose. Rose. What a day. One sad person after another. Rose, you work at grief counseling. What do you expect, comedians? Would it be a change of pace? Oh, Dorothy, can I borrow your mint stole? It's Miami in June. Only cats are wearing fur. <laughs> Going out? No, no, she's going to sit here where it's 112 degrees and eat enchiladas. <laughs> I'd 
just need some cucumbers to put on my eyes. You'll have trouble seeing, Blanche. <laughs> it's very good. It reduces puffiness. Does it work on thighs? <laughs> I don't know, honey. I don't need it on my thighs. Rose, play or die? <laughs> Miami is nice, so I'll say it twice. Miami is nice, Miami is nice, Miami is... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You put in an extra Miami is nice. I had to, it hurts the music if you don't put it in. Yeah, but the lyrics don't make any sense. I mean, it goes, Miami is nice, so I'll say it twice. Oh, I see your point. <laughs> Well, what about this? Miami is nice, so I'll say it thrice. Right, who the hell says thrice? It's a word. So is interuterine. <laughs> it does not belong in a song. <laughs> Miami, you're cuter than an interuterine. You know what I think? I think I can handle this relationship with Dirk. I'm going out with him Saturday night. Was there ever any doubt? Momentarily. This is strictly off the record, but Dirk's nearly five years younger than I am. <laughs> then what, Blanche? Dog years? The point is, Rose, you do this kind of stupid thing all the time. And if you're not doing something stupid, you're saying something stupid, or wearing something stupid, or cooking something stupid. Rose, what do you think of Blanche saying these things? I think she's a girl karma knocking. <laughs> well, what exactly does that mean? Literally, it's the precise moment when dog dude turns white. <laughs> It refers to the kind of person you don't want to share your hoogan coggles with. <laughs> Rose, if you say one more of those stupid words, I'll so help me out your tubing burbles. <laughs> She's not back yet? No. I don't understand. What could they be doing all this time? You know what they're doing. Yeah, I also know Stan. We were married for 38 years. And if you added up all the times that we did what he is doing right now, Blanche still should have been home 15 minutes ago. <laughs> To either get ice cream or commit a felony. I'll decide in the car. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh -huh. Blanche, you okay? Oh, yeah. Hi. I was just checking. Would you sit with me for a minute? Well, sure, Blanche. Boy, you were doing a lot of talking in your sleep. Oh. You had that dream again, didn't you? I told you I heard voices in here and... Oh, God, it's Dorothy. <laughs> I tell you, she takes one tennis lesson. Ma Blanche had her dream. Are you all right? I think so. You know, usually I feel so empty when I realize George isn't here, but this time it's different. How? Well, I don't know. The dream was different. Oh, wait. I got to hug him. You know how I always wake up before I get to hug George? This time I didn't. Oh, Blanche, that's wonderful. It was wonderful, Rose. When he died, I thought, oh, the worst part is I'll never get to hold him again. Tonight, I did. I could actually feel him. 